Before we get to the movie, I want to talk about Macbeth. Macbeth? I've been editing it for the last two weeks, and so I've got Macbeth on the brain. Okay, go on. You remember the scene where Malcolm wanders by and finds out that Macbeth has killed his father? Uh, yeah. Do you know how Malcolm did that? Why? It's because he was on his way to kill his father. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And what proof do you have? I don't have proof, but if you look at the tone that Macbeth has when he's talking to him, he really has a tone of like, we both know why I'm here. We both know why you're here. I beat you to it. So you get on your horse and get out of here because you lost. Also, at the end, this did not make it into the episode, but at the end, we see Flance on the battlefield and he Mm -hmm. picks up a sword and he looks at it. And then we see Malcolm in the castle and he picks up a sword and he looks at it. Yes. Malcolm is going to be just as bad a tyrant as Macbeth was. Mm -hmm. And Flance will grow up. To kill the king and usurp the throne, just like Macbeth did. Because Flance ain't related to Malcolm. How else is he going to father a line of Scottish kings? There we go. This is what we should do with all the episodes. We should talk at the beginning, during the cold open, about the previous thing. Because then... Oh. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Well, Craig, it's been a long road that we've been on here in The Basement, and for you, this is the end of it. This is Craig's final show. The show will continue on. I will put someone else in that chair. And Craig will also return for one more show in September, a little reunion after the summer. But uh, for right now, this is it. Yes. I can't think of a more appropriate movie to watch tonight, because this movie features one of the most famous departures in cinematic history. It's a film about a man named Shane. <laughs> oh, I just saw a little bit of this movie because I finally saw Logan, which this plays oh, yeah. a big part in. I think Logan is the best Marvel movie yep. of them all. Mm-hmm. Released in 1953, Shane was directed by Basement alum George Stevens and stars Alan Ladd, Gene Arthur, Van Heflin, Jack Palance, Elisha Cook Jr., that nervous little fella, <laughs> and Basement alum Ben Johnson. Shane was nominated for six Oscars, winning only one for Best Color Cinematography. Which it deserves. How many times have you seen this? Just once. And when was that? Ten, eleven years ago, when I was filling my Western gaps. Ah. This was a big one right through the Tetons. It must have been before my dad died. I remember saying, Dad, you told me once that Shane meant a lot to you when you were a kid. And he said, I've never seen Shane. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have one more gift to give you. It's something that maybe will amuse you when you have some time on your hands. So close your eyes. Does not fit in the box. Open them up. Oh, my old pal Simon. Simon! Well, rustle yourself on over to the old leather couch for one last roundup known as Shane. One morning, a young boy has his sights on a deer. Uncanny valley boy, (laughs) uncanny valley boy. But the deer's frighted off by by a local horse. But the deer's frighted off by a horse that's passing through. Deer, come back, deer. (laughs) Too soon. (laughs) Too soon. Our story begins in Wyoming at the Joe Start Homestead. There's Joe right there. The splayed Axeman. <laughs> That's his wife, Marion. And there's little Joey. A stranger rides up. He's fringy and looking fine. His name is Shane. God damn, that is a homely kid. I'm sorry to say. I didn't mean, I don't mean to bring it up. That kid's got a gut on him. <laughs> you lay off the kid. I can't help it. Oh, his horse has one of those Thanos gems on his, on his thing here. <laughs> what, are they, what are those called? The eternity stones? He's about to leave. And these guys show up. They're the Rikers, and they're ranchers. Joe and his family are homesteaders, so there's a classic conflict that goes on there. Get off my land, and Shane scares them off. Joe and his family take a liking to Shane after all, and he stays for supper. My wife sure can cook. Cook you up a fine bowl of slop. Wash up right here. Did you say wash, mister? (laughs) We make God, don't we, Marion? Five times a day. That's why I call him Mr. Five. (laughs) A little blast from the past. (laughs) I know one thing. The only way they're going to get me out of here is in a pine box. What do you mean, Pa? Joe, I wish you wouldn't talk like that. Well, I wish you wouldn't foreshadow like that, Joe. 
and he and Joe do some stump chopping. And they take down the stump, and it works. And they're men, and they're manly, and they do it. Knock the stump over, they beat it. They beat that old dead tree. We're having stump for breakfast. Joe's boy, Joey, takes a liking to Shane immediately. Can you shoot as good as Shane, Pa? Are you as good of a lover as Shane, Pa? He didn't wear his gun today. Why is that, Pa? Pa, why is it when I think about you, you have Shane's face? Could you whip him, Pa? Could you whip Shane? Ho oh, ho Not by a country mile, son. Shane decides to stick around for a while, and he goes to the store to get himself some work clothes. Oh, he's looking fringy. <laughs> Boy, the guys in this place do not cotton to anything. <laughs> Everybody laughs at him, especially this guy, Calloway. Here, have some of this. Yeah. But Shane plays it cool. He doesn't do anything. We get the sense that Shane's got a violent past that he's trying to get away from. That is subtext. Chris just put the run on a sod buster. That's it, Chris. We want the sod in these here parts unbusted. It's quality sod out there, but only if it's solid. There's a meeting of the homesteaders. They're trying to figure out what to do about this Riker situation. I'm here to tell you, for one, that I ain't leaving now or any other time. Not until they most certainly kill me. Maybe Shane can tell you what happened between him and this Chris Calloway and Mr. Riker. They're talking about Shane. Can he dig it? <laughs> <laughs> this cat Shane is a sod buster. <laughs> Shut your mouth. I think we know. He just starts slowly floating away. <laughs> if we're going to go into town, we should all go together. That way they can't mess with us all at the same time because we have safety in numbers. I wish he would hurry so we could get going. Ah, the square heads are going up the Spearfish <laughs> Road. It's song and Wyoming's on my mind. Let's go down to Grafton today. Let's see, do I want mercantile or sundries? Mm, I just don't know. Shane should have stuck with the fringy jacket. Now he just looks like a businessman. His high-waisted pants and his baggy shirt. Not sexy at all. Shane gets harassed again at the saloon. Don't push it, Calloway. Heidi ho Calloway. Come over here, I'll buy you a drink. Ha-ha! There you go. There's my revenge. All right, now we're cool with each other. No. And they have a slugfest. This is bad. This is bad. We haven't even placed bets yet. <laughs> Both of these guys deserve two for flinching. <laughs> Already. Oh, I like Calloway's striped pants. Riker's boys all join in. Shane, there's too many. There's an actor who's an adult who that kid looks like. He looks like a shrunken version of that actor. He's a modern actor. <laughs> Sean William Scott. Oh, him? Is that who I'm thinking of? It's kind of him. Are you mad? And there's a huge barroom brawl. Shane's in there. Ooh, oh, I wouldn't do it. Riker's got coming to him. And... God, he's got a baggy shirt, too. Jesus. Don't these people know? Have they, have they never heard of a tailor? <laughs> Joe and Shane against the Rikers. I'm paying for what's broke. No, by Godfrey, we're paying for what's broke. Me and Shane. Or Shane. Shane, Shane will pay. Riker is all beat up, and he says, I'm sick of this. From now on, when we fight with them, the air is going to be filled with gun smoke. Joe and Shane are back home. Marion is fixing them up, and Joey takes her aside in the next room. What is it, Joe? There's no one I love more than Shane. I love him almost as much as I love Pa. <laughs> <laughs> You've known him for two days. Joe. Could you change your name to Shane? I think your son would like you better. The next day... This gunslinger comes into town. Here he comes <laughs> like a shark. It's Jack Paul Lance. He has more bones than face. You promised you'd show me how to shoot. All right, I'll show you how to shoot guns. So when your hand comes up, the gun will clear the holster without coming up too high. Also, your gun shouldn't be made out of wood. It should be made out of gun. One, for instance, likes to have a shoulder holster. Another one puts it in his... Uh, the belt of his pants. And there are ones who wear their guns outside their pants for all the honest world to feel. Let me see you shoot, Shane. What do you want me to shoot at? Shoot at me, Shane. The gun is a tool, Miriam. No better, no worse than any other tool. 
an axe, a shovel, or anything. I don't know. You can kill a lot of people with a gun really fast. It takes a while with a shovel. <laughs> it's the 4th of July. Everyone is celebrating. They're going to town to get whiskey and gunpowder for fireworks and food for eating. Tori goes to the saloon and he starts shooting his mouth off, talking about how he's not afraid of anybody and he's not going to be run off his land. And he is to me, because I ain't a coward. Although I play one in most of the movies I'm casting. Back home, the homesteaders are having a big blowout. Back in the days when fireworks were simply explosions. Yes, that people <laughs> would play during dances, not like a whole separate event. <laughs> and he's quit, he's getting out today. Just a little he's bit packed cold. up kit and caboodle. And his caboodle? I was hoping to buy his caboodle off him. I've been looking for a nice used caboodle. Shane finds out that the gunfighter's name is Jack Wilson, and he's this really badass dude. That night, Riker shows up at Joe's place, and he offers Joe a job. I'll pay you top wages. You get full benefits and Cobra. Joe's not interested. He's a farmer. He doesn't want to be one of Riker's thugs. Riker makes this big speech. They came to this land first. They set up their ranches. They made the land safe. I got a bad shoulder yet from a Cheyenne arrowhead. You guys have just showed up here and taken my land. And it's not fair. We made this country. Founded and we made it. Well, after the Cheyenne did. <laughs> but we were second. The next day, over at Grafton's, Tori's there, and he sees that guy, Jack Wilson. <laughs> Stonewall Jackson was trash himself. You're a low down line Yankee. Prove it. No, Tori. Tory has toried his last Tory. Yep. The Swede brings him back to the homestead. He says, oh, Tory has been murdered. Go to town. I'm going to see about this. I got Wait. some in my eye. Wait for them. You don't have to be ashamed of being emotional, no, no. Craig. No, Tory. And they have a funeral for Tory. Funeral for a friend. Tory lies bleeding in my hand. No, I'm not a fan of music, you know, so... It was true then. <laughs> it's true today. Lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. <laughs> it's funny when you say anything, Swede. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our... Our hunde hunde. As we forgive those who hunde hunde <laughs> against us. After everyone, including the dog, says goodbye. We're going. Goodbye, Joe. Me gotta go. Me oh my oh. Sart decides that he's going to go into town and he's just going to fix this thing for good because that's what a good guy has to do. Everybody knows that if Joe goes into town, he's going to get killed. Joe, you can't do it. Don't even think about it. Say no, Joe. Shane puts back on his fringe. Ah, Shane's got his gun on. He's coming. He's all shamed up. He's got his fringe on and everything. He's fringy. What are you fighting for? The shack? This little piece of ground and nothing but work, work, work? I'm sick of it. I want to move to Kansas City. <laughs> That's where the party's That's at. where fun happens. I'm the one who's going to do this job. Am I going to have to fight you too? That depends on you. Punching, 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 punching. Shane knocks him out with a gun. Joey sees that and says, oh, you hit him with your gun. That's not fair. I hate you. And I love your gun. Joe, me thinks Joey a bit capricious. <laughs> Shane goes to meet Riker. Joey runs all the way to town. Tori's dog follows. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> Whoosh. He goes into... Grand Grandies? What is it called? Grafton's. He goes into Grafton's. The saloon is ominously quiet. He sees Jack Wilson. We haven't heard from your friend here. <laughs> okay, now we've heard from him. <laughs> Showdown. Bam, 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 bam. Shane, look out! The riflemen also gets a bullet into Shane. You better run back. Can I ride home behind you? Shane says, no, I'm not going home. I'm going away. You go home to your mother and your father and grow up to be strong and straight. And every 
year on this day, be sure to tell your father how I beat his ass. <laughs> bye bye And he heads out of town. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Up into the mountains. Smell ya later. Not said, but it's implied. And the boy says... Killed some guys, disappointed a kid. It's been a good day. <laughs> Shane. He went away and he's not coming back. No, no. Did he die? Do you think he died? Oh. That's a debate about the movie because he, he oh. does take a bullet at the end. Like he's riding off because he knows that he's done for. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a deep movie. I always thought that Shane was sort of like the textbook Western. Yeah. But it's really where Westerns are starting to change. How do you mean by that? Where There's more gray areas. Mm-hmm. That speech that Riker gives. I know. You never get that from a villain. And it totally makes sense. I'm the reason you have a place to be here and I don't want you here. It's brilliant. Yeah, I made that joke at the beginning. That guy doesn't have a bad guy head. He's got an old coot head. <laughs> but he's not your typical villain. No. And I loved the mud and the dirt in this thing. The scene where Tori gets shot is like something out of McCabe and Mrs. Miller. That was the muddiest mud. He's just so degraded there. He's down there like a pig in the mud. It was also innovative in the way it depicted violence because the director wanted to show the seriousness of gun violence. Oh, yes. When Palance and when Elijah Cook get shot, he rigged them up with wires. So when they got shot, they would get jerked back. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Stevens was exaggerating the sound of a gunshot. And I think he was. Yeah. He wanted those deaths to be shocking and he wanted those deaths to count. Mm -hmm. Even when there were bad guys dying. Stevens worked for the army during the war. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why this movie looks nothing like Swing Time, which we watched years ago on the show, which Stevens also directed. That was before the war. His movies got very dark after the war. Was he one of the five? He was from one that, of the five. From yeah. that book? Five came back. Mm -hmm. The first choice for Shane was Montgomery Clift. Oh, really? How do you think Alan Ladd did? Better. I think I, Mon Montgomery Clift would have put too much weight on, onto things. Al Ladd plays everything very straight. He plays it with a little bit of a smile and a casualness. And the casualness in Montgomery Clift never had. I love Monty Clift. But oh, sure. Shane shows up. He says he's going nowhere and he wants nothing. He is a man, clearly with a past, who has no past. Montgomery Clift would be like exuding this like ask me questions thing. I found myself wanting to know... Shane's backstory, mm -hmm. but it's probably best that I didn't. Yeah, he's a fascinating character, and you know nothing about him. And another thing that really makes this film seem set apart from other westerns, even of the 50s, is just those little candid moments that they included. That little girl, she yeah. was doing all kinds of weird stuff, and they left it all in. Mm -hmm. And it gave the movie a looseness that you wouldn't expect from something of that era. They're going by that funeral scene is perfect. A tumbleweed goes underneath a horse and the horse freaks out. What are the chances of that? Can you aim a tumbleweed at a horse? Jack, do you say Palance or Palance? It's Palance. When it's I was Palance. a kid, it was Palance. And then someday, I think it was around City Slickers, it mm -hmm. became Palance. Once he again got into Oscar nomination territory. Really good job, but Oscar nomination? And he has, I think... 14 lines in the entire movie. You could take all of his dialogue and fit it on a postage stamp. What do you think of that? He's got that presence. There does seem to be layers going on there. He's thinking the entire time. Yeah, I'm not saying that to be worthy of an Oscar nomination, you need a bunch of lines of dialogue. Still, Van Heflin didn't get nominated. I didn't even think Alan Ladd got nominated. Van Heflin is amazing. When I first saw this movie, I am like, who is this guy? He's so strong, and he doesn't look like anyone else in movies. He does not look like a leading man, and he doesn't look like a character actor. He They're... looks like your dad's friend that you can kind of trust. I love this movie. I am very happy you chose this to go out on. I'd say it's one of the ten best movies we've seen on the show. Shane, Shane, come back, Shane, come back, Shane. No, Shane is not coming back because Shane is over. And now it's time for us to mosey on over to Seen It. Seen It. Sean Henry, rope. It's pretty dandy for certain. Seen it. Seen it. It seems to all be done in one take. Obviously, they can't do that because film reels only go for 10 minutes. So he does all kinds of tricks and wipes to cover up the cuts. But still, uh, it gives that effect. It's a type of Hitchcock movie that might be your favorite, but it's clearly not his best. Uh, very miscast Jimmy Stewart in this. Why do you say he's miscast? He doesn't seem right for the role. I think Cary Grant would have been a much oh, better choice. College professor? Yeah. James Mason. 
James Mason. James as well. Mason. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy Stewart doesn't strike me as the sort of erudite urban fellow, mm-hmm. and, and that's what he's, he's doing in this. He does it fine. He does a fine job because yeah. he's a great actor. And you don't really think about it while you're watching it because you're watching Jimmy Stewart, and he's yeah, he's amazing. TJG writes: Is Raising Arizona the best movie set or filmed in Arizona? I'm not a Nick Cage fan, but this one is one of my favorite movies of all time. Seen it. I've seen that movie, Ed. <laughs> you know the one thing I don't like about it. John Goodman screaming. Yeah? Yeah, I don't like those scenes. They're very unpleasant. And I really want them to end, and they just go on and on. And I know that's what's funny about it. Mm Mm-hmm. Doesn't hit me in that funny bone. I do believe that the trailer fight scene in Kill Bill Volume 2 was based off of John Goodman and Nicolas Cage fighting in this movie. Oh, that fight scene is hilarious. When he raises up his hands and rakes his hands (laughs) against the stucco (gasps) ceiling. (laughs) This is something we've never done on Seen It Before. Dylan Pem, have your thoughts on the tone of my own private Idaho changed since you watched it on the show? Every time I watch it, it becomes more a more optimistic movie. Mike's mm. problems with Scott were similar to my own teenage problems, so I get happier every time I see the movie end with the unknown driver helping Mike. Seen it on this show. <laughs> yeah, seen it. You can check it out. I didn't see the ending as optimistic as Dylan did. The character of Mike just... As he gets closer to the end movie, just getting more and more hopelessly adrift. He passes out in the middle of the road, and he's just taken off to who knows where. Yeah. He may as well get taken by a spaceship. I've always seen it as he eventually saw it, too, where he's being saved by someone. There are certain certain folks who talk about, like, everybody's got to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to be their own man or, you know, do their own stuff. Some people just need to be taken care of. Yeah. Some people need someone to look after them. Mm-hmm. And Mike is that is that guy, and if he doesn't have that, he's adrift in the ocean. Ian DeLuga writes, Paddington 2 lived up to the hype. I didn't believe that some random kids movie sequel could be quite that amazing, but here we are. Seen it. I haven't seen it, but I will eventually. I love this movie. Hugh Grant plays the villain in it, and Grant himself says it's his best performance ever. Famously mentioned in the Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent movie. When Lorenzo was two, Christmas was coming up, I'm like, I'm getting him both Paddington movies. I searched and searched and searched. You know who doesn't care about Paddington movies? Kids. Yeah. Yeah, they are children movies for adults. There's a place you can go where no one's going to run you off, and that's our website, Welcome to the Basement Show.com. The entire catalog is there, all... 11 and a half years of this crazy show that we've been doing together is on there. You can go and be nostalgic all you want. And there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to make a one-time or rolling monthly donation to support this show. Support of this show will help it continue on into the indefinite future. And I have a couple of donors to thank and read their comments. First of all, there's Emma from Finland. Emma, thank you for your show. We have seen all of your episodes together with my spouse, Auntie. Thank you for being with us for almost 10 years. Also, have you seen Sisu? It's the latest film by Jalmari Helander, the director behind Rare Exports. I haven't seen that yet. I just heard about this movie, and I want to see it. It sounds very fun. And then there's Dan, who says, Hello, Matt. I hope my first donation ever makes it to you before Craig leaves. Thank you both for regularly reminding us of the limitless potential of cinema and the joy of spending time with good friends. Happy trails and best of luck. That's great. Our time together is almost to a close. Yes, our revels now are ended. (laughs) I just want to say thank you for all of this time. I have really loved doing this show, and I really love movies. I'm so happy that I've had an outlet for talking about this thing that I've been fascinated about since I was seven or eight years old. Here are a few movie recommendations for you, if I may. Smiles of a Summer Night by Ingmar Bergman. Local Hero. The In-Laws, the original one from the 70s. RRR and Ride the High Country. Check those out and then maybe we'll run into each other someday and we can talk about them. Thanks. Hey. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Craig's not leaving just yet. He will be here for unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. That is going to be some more Craig and Matt chat. Uh, The last of it for a little bit, Uh, but you can check that out then. And right now you can check out this. I'm going to beat the high score. Maybe this is the show.